Hello, my name is Drew Youngworth. I am a senior software engineer at Courier. Today, we're going to be discussing versioning graph data with DynamoDB. Let's hop right in. So quick agenda, uh, we'll be introducing versioning, and then we'll go over what it's like to version simple data, and then we'll get into the more complex scenario of versioning graph data. Uh, and then we will go over some of the benefits and challenges of versioning with DynamoDB, and then we'll wrap things up. All right, so before diving into the details of versioning graph data, let's first establish a baseline of understanding of versioning. Versioning in the context of data management refers to the process of tracking and managing changes to data over time. This can be particularly important for maintaining the history of data modifications, enabling rollback up to previous states, and facilitating collaboration among team members. Versioning is essential for several reasons. First, it helps maintain data integrity and traceability by providing a historical record of changes. Second, it allows for easy recovery in case of errors or data corruption. Finally, versioning enables multiple users to work on the same data simultaneously without the risk of overriding each other's work, which can be invaluable in collaborative projects. Some use cases that you may already be aware of is in software development using tools like SVN or Git, um, and it's more widely used in collaborative document management platforms such as Google Docs or Microsoft Office. Um, in Courier's case, our products also use versioning. When you're designing a notification or an automation, in my case, uh, we allow our users to roll back changes that they've made over time. So it's super useful in platforms like Courier or Google Docs. So we'll give a quick example. Uh, in this presentation, I'm going to use the product I worked on, which is Courier's automations platform. So we'll start with a, a simple piece of data. This is just a schedule um, that defines a type, a frequency, and a start date and an end date. So we'll just pretend that that's the only document that we're versioning for now. Um, so we'll be implementing this using DynamoDB transactional rights. This allows us to handle things like race conditions very easily in case two people are working at the same time. We wouldn't want to overwrite the same version. Um, each save will store two copies of the same record. One is our v V0. It's always the latest version, and it points to its other copy, which has a fixed version number that gets incremented every single time a new version is saved. So if we save our first version, we'd have V0 as a copy of the first version, and it would say revision one, and then we'd have a second document whose sort key is V1. Um, and then once we saved our second one, the V0 version would be overwritten. Um, the revision of that V0 would bump to two, and then we'd store a second copy with the sort key of V2, which we fetched from the previous version. Um, the PK can just be a unique ID. That's what it is in our case at Courier. Um, so this is kind of a, 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 some pseudocode on, on what it looks like to actually do this operation. So we first fetch the previous version. If one exists, then we can determine our revision number by checking the revision number of the previous version and adding one. Then we'll write two different versions um, of the new item. Um, this is an error here. That should say new item uh, instead of previous. But we have new item here, our current revision. And we'll store that as v0. And then we'll also store uh, with the current revision number. Um, if one doesn't exist, if there is no previous item, then we just store our new item pretend this also says new item, and we'll start with revision one. So we're storing V1 and we're storing V0. 
So let's get into the more advanced scenario where you're versioning graph data. So just an example of what graph data could look like. In our case, Courier is storing automations as a graph. So a user is literally designing a graph that designs a, a notification workflow. So you can perform some basic logic, maybe send different notifications based on some prerequisite logic, or maybe you're doing fetching data. So that ends up looking like a graph. But there's plenty of other cases in the real world that you might want to be doing this sort of thing. Um, maybe you're doing software development and you want to implement version control on that. Maybe you're working with some sort of supply chain or you're just working with an, another Google Docs competitor or something like that. So those are cases where uh, graph data might be necessary um, or might be a good format to store in a database. Um, and you want to track changes accurately. So if we deleted one of those branches and changed the comparison to is not, we need to track both the data that changed inside of each node. You can see here, I, I went and changed Earth to Mars and I set the comparison to is not. So we need to track that we got rid of that one edge here. Um, we got rid of this node and we need to track the data that changed in between here. It would be really bad if we said Earth here still when we rolled back a version because the comparison is, is not Earth. So in Courier's implementation of versioned graph data, we use two tables. One represents the whole graph. It stores the graph. The other stores the nodes. Um, the graph table stores all the edges, so those connections that we define between each node, and it stores a copy of what version each node was on when we made our last revision. Um, both tables use an identical version control strategy, so this pseudocode from earlier applies to both the nodes table and the graph table. Um, so we will update the pseudocode a little bit here um, from before. So we're going to call this function save node. So this is just what we use to save a node to the nodes table. Uh, you can see I fixed the code here. It's actually uh, more correct. We are not using previous in the right, wrong place. We're just using it uh, to determine the current revision. Um, and we're saving two copies. One contains the node that we're storing with the up-to-date revision number pointed to V0. You can see we're always fetching V0 when we're determining previous, so we can grab that revision number and then save a second copy with the up-to-date revision number. Um, and we're returning the revision. Uh, if there's no previous version, then of course we are on revision one. So this returning the re revision is a new thing that we'll get to here soon. All right, so let's just define an interface for our graph. In this case, it's going to be really simple. The edges doesn't even matter. That's fairly implementation specific. But our node versions is what's relevant to this discussion. Uh, we're just simply storing the ID and the version for each of our nodes. So this is an array of nodes, and all we're tracking is the ID, the node ID, and the node version. So the pseudocode looks very similar to the previous node versions. We're actually calling, so this get edges is just pudocode or it's uh, implementation specific. so we can skip over that. But the node versions code here, you can see that for every one of the nodes that gets passed, uh, we will map over them and we'll call that save node function, which will turn, uh, return a version. Um, and then we just return in this map the node ID and the version. So that generates our list of node versions. And then we create the graph and we call essentially the exact same code as we did previously, uh, but we're using the graph ID. Um, instead. That's essentially the only difference in this code when we're saving a graph versus when we're saving a node. 
Um, that's pretty much all there is to it. I, I mean, the key implementation detail is we're storing the edges and the nodes separately. Um, we've got two tables, a graph table and a nodes table. And the graph table just holds a snapshot of all the different node revisions that we're on each time we save a node and the edge connections that we make in between. Um, so now we can get into the benefits of versioning with DynamoDB. So these are basically just the benefits of using DynamoDB in the first place. You get practically infinite scale, you get low latency, and it's highly reliable. Another main benefit and the reason Courier went with using DynamoDB is because it's extremely queryable. We can get a lot of information about each node, its usage, and how things are getting connected to each other. Some challenges. So race conditions can be a big deal. If two users save at the very same time and you're getting your revision based off of the previous version, then by the time one operation has got a version, a new version may have been created. So the way that you handle this is in your transactional rights, you can do a condition expression where you ensure that the sort key for the version that you're about to save doesn't exist. And if it does, you can just retry the whole operation. Um, another drawback to this approach is it's very write heavy and writes are pretty expensive in Dynamo. So we're storing, we're, we're performing a write for every single node and every version we write twice. We write two copies of that, uh, of that version. Um, performance can degrade with very large graphs. So if your graphs are large and you're storing a whole bunch of data inside of them, you might need to tweak this approach. You can use one database to just store, or one table, excuse me, to just store the edges and nodes, and then store the node data in something like S3. Um, error handling can be complex. For example, if saving one node of many nodes errors out at one point, you might want to do something special to handle that situation. Um, and of course, implementation varies by needs. There's a whole bunch of different ways to approach this problem. You can use atomic counters um, without needing to perform a read before you perform your writes and saves. Um, you can check out some of the other implementation examples. Uh, I'll link in the sources at the end of this. All right, so just to recap, we gave an introduction to what versioning is, we established a baseline, we went over what it's like to version simple data, and then we gave an example of how you could version more complex graph-based data. Uh, so hopefully this served as a good introduction uh, to what version control is like in DynamoDB, what versioning a graph is like in DynamoDB, and hopefully it gave some ideas for your own product or service. Um, if you're interested, you can find me. My website is at https drew.ltd. You can find me on LinkedIn, drew-youngworth. And if you wanna see some of the stuff that I'm working on, my GitHub is drew-y. Uh, here's my sources. <laughs> you can probably download these slides and check them out. It's really only one major great source. Um, but thanks everyone.